Hello sports fans, Chris Terrell here with RotorPros.com to bring you another DFS cheat sheet tutorial video. Before we do that, if you're not a member, I'll tell you a little bit about RotorPros. If you go over to RotorPros.com, this is where you're going to find our free content. Um, you'll find like today we've got our NBA DFS breakdown up here, the early look, as well as some strategy articles, one for NBA, one just for overall bankroll management contest selection. Um, the rest of the articles can be found up here at the top tab. And then if you're not a member, like I said, you can get a free trial. You can click that uh, sign up button up top. Uh, $5 a week, $15 a month, $150 a year, three-day three trial, sorry, uh, for a weekly, seven-day trial for the monthly, and seven-day trial for the yearly. You can come in and try us out. And if you use uh, promo code RP50, you're going to get 50% off after that trial's up. So that becomes 75 bucks a year, 750 a month, and 250 a week depending on which package you choose. That gives you access to our uh, Slack channel, um, our, our DFS Slack community. This is where our DFS coaches are hanging out pretty much the entire day. We cover a wide range of sports, uh, EPL, soccer, going on right now we got nba we got uh, college football kind of wrapping up college basketball's in the full swing nhl is coming back MMA, mma and pga are coming back in january as well nascar in february um, we got a lot going on um, full of cheat sheets in there as well that gives you access to all of our dfs cheat sheets for every single sport um, highlighted plays for gpp cash games like i said strategies there's a lot going on over at roller pros come on check us out uh, i'm pretty sure you're going to be happy uh, joining our winning family with that let's get into the the cheat sheet here just kind of going to want to go over the nba cheat sheet show you how i use it what some of it means um, and how you can best utilize it on a daily basis so when i first set it up uh, I start my research at the team tab. I look at all the games for that day. Kind of look at start at Vegas totals. Look at uh, over unders, which which ones have high over unders, close spreads, and you know not uh, blowouts. We don't really want blowouts because starters get sat. So that's one of the key things that we talk about for strategy. So that's where I start, and then it kind of shows you standings, home and road record, and then we get into the team actual stat statistics, um, points per game, points allowed per game. We look at pace. So when it comes to pace offensive efficiency and defensive efficiency that is calculated uh, pace is first of all is possessions how many possessions a team has per 48 minutes so per per, per game uh, and then team offensive efficiency and defensive efficiency is points allowed or points for um, per 100 possessions they just go everyone out of 100 per possession like that and then what i do uh this year on the sheet instead of showing just those numbers or rankings this is just uh, above or below league average so for instance new york is negative 2.1 so they actually have negative 2.1 possessions below league average um per game so high pace teams are going to be like your chicago uh 6.6 .6 possessions per 48 minutes um over the league average so that is the second highest on the slate to golden state and then we've got team of offensive efficiency so for instance detroit and golden state as you can see they are both uh minus 11 and minus 10 um points below uh league average in terms of 100 every 100 possessions how many points they're going to score so red is obviously bad green is going to be good because that's kind of look we're looking at team offense and then on the defensive side um obviously the higher the defense is going to be your uh, in red and positive in green. So the bad defenses are going to have a negative. So we're kind of looking for a double green scenario here. So one would be like Cleveland tonight. Um, they are plus 3.1 points per 100 possessions over league average, while New York is negative 3.7. So that's a, that's a pretty good matchup. So those are just some things I start looking at to start narrowing down what teams, what games I'm going to start concentrating on. And then, of course, we got the... Per game stats for rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks. You can kind of see if a team maybe has a rebound advantage is kind of what I look at. Um, so we've got a, a pretty big one here, Milwaukee over Miami. Um, so that kind of maybe gives you a little bit of a downgrade on the rebounding statistics for Miami. If you're looking at it that way, maybe an uptick for the Milwaukee guys. That's another way you can go about looking at that data. And then from there... I will start at, this would be your all players, so we've got FanDuel and DraftKings information on here, percentage of the cap, how much of that player's salary will cost you of the cap, so on FanDuel we're looking at 60000 on DraftKings we're at 50000 
and then we got the projection so that is our beta projections we're running this season um, going off per minute projections per minute stat projections and then we've also started looking at minutes projections you can see over here in the red that's new this year to the NBA sheet um, so we'll go in and we'll adjust so if a player what you'll see here is like a player for instance that maybe doesn't start that's going to start tonight we give him an uptick in our back end of his minutes going to give him obviously a higher points per dollar multiplier in terms of his projection just a, a nice way to look at it and then we use these new filters across the top makes it a lot easier to, to filter you see these coming across almost all the cheat sheets going forward so for instance if you want it's always going to be sorted by FanDuel pricing highest to lowest each and each and every individual position tab if you wanted to sort say by DraftKings you're just going to click this arrow here, um, sort either A to Z, which would be lowest to highest, or Z to A, which is uh, highest to lowest. So we'll go and sort by DraftKings, and we'll look at those guys there. So that kind of covers the salary and uh, points projection. That's kind of what I look at the most uh, when kind of filtering through. So uh, another thing I will always do early in the day for sure is look at the points per dollar projections. So, for instance, we got Nicholas Patum. Uh, me and Kenny actually talked about him earlier about how his price in that mid 4K range is just a little, un, you know, uh, underpriced for what he can bring, even though he's had the last down game. Um, but there's some stuff there. They got blown out. He was only had 22 minutes in that game. This obviously could be a blowout tonight as well. But just he that just kind of gives you guys that are going to be a little bit underpriced compared to the projection that we have it's not always going to be right the projections are beta like i said but it kind of gives you an idea we can start looking in more so what i'll usually do is find these top five ten guys write them down or put them on a separate tab create a separate tab on my own um and then just go dig into those guys a little bit more and then adjust their minutes as we go on through the day and then kind of figure out the the why um they show up in the system so that's one way i kind of go about doing that and to go and sort these you're going to have to make a copy because it's going to be a view only so if you go up to the top and you click on file make a copy name it whatever you'd like and click OK it's going to open up another version whatever you named it you're going to be able to go in then and sort these the only thing to watch is on the starting lineups tab you're not it's not going to update when I go through and get the confirmed starting lineups you're not going to see that information if you create your own copy so make sure to go back to that master copy um, if you want to see the starting lineup so this is the tab as confirmed starting lineups come in, I am updating them on here when they're confirmed starting. I'm going to have a checkbox there. This is another place, again, where you're going to see the minutes projection, DraftKings FanDuel salary, uh, the points per minute. That's their projection, um, how many points per minute. So that obviously affects their overall minutes and their overall projection. And then it shows their projection for FanDuel and DraftKings there as well. Um, so we've got all the games on there tonight. We've got 10, so you can see that there. So that's going to populate um, as those confirmed lineups come in. So the other thing, uh, members only will see uh, Kenny each and every day does his top five players at every position, gives a few notes like GPP only, best value on FanDuel, best value on DK, um, so-and-so is out, this guy is a good value tonight. So that's going to be members only. We usually start seeing that about an hour or two before lock. Um, and then over in the Slack chat, he's got his skeleton lineups up about 20 to 40 minutes before lock. It all depends on the slate. Got to keep in mind with... Um, DFS NBA that that uh, that last 30 minutes 45 minutes before lock is crucial when one player one key player goes out um, another player steps in is going to take over those minutes or those minutes might get distributed on some teams um, but not being there and present before lock can create a lot of dead lineups um, so definitely if you're playing don't don't just set a lineup an hour or two before lock and just leave it. You're, you're really doing a dis, disservice to yourself. Um, so make sure to, you know, we're in chat leading up to lock, giving you all the information, news that comes through. So make sure to utilize that uh, as well. So all these other positions are going to be the same. Um, we've got Vegas information here. All the player stats now have been rolled over to the new season. So we've got games, game started, which can be crucial. You can tell if a player's been, you know, a, a can, you know, majority starter for the season or if he's come off the bench, and that's crucial. If he steps into a starting role, we can maybe give him a bump in projection. Um, obviously, he's going to get maybe a little bit more usage. Every situation is going to be different. 
And then we got minutes per game on the season, points per game, um, that player's usage in his own offense, offensive rating. It, this is individual now. So one thing I will do after I go and look at these team matchups, like I said, in terms of offensive efficiency and defensive efficiency, um, opponent defensive efficiency, I mean, is start going to break down the individual players um, for Cleveland and New York. And I'll usually just do like a control F to search and I'll just type in Cleveland and I'll start going through individual positions looking at, uh, let's say Darius Garland, for instance, he's 24.1 offensive rating, um, higher than league average. And he's going to be like a matchup of obviously is going to be, uh, I can't quite find it here. The highlights aren't quite showing up. Um, but like, just pick out a player and he goes who he's going to face like and you can go to the starting lineups tab obviously and we will look for garland there next going to be facing peyton there we go i don't know why i couldn't find that but then i'll search peyton and i will look in turn at his uh defensive efficiency uh defensive rating sorry um which is 2.3 so he's just a little bit above league average not not the greatest of matchups but that's one way you can go and start you know, after you pick out the teams that you want to target, go and start breaking down the individual players. Really like looking at minutes per game, minutes projections, obviously. Kind of make sure that they're in line or start asking questions like, why do we have them projected for more than what they've averaged on the season? Is there a reason for that? Um, you know, there's a lot of context behind it. You know, a team could play three games, two of them being blowouts. A player didn't get to his ceiling minutes or kind of minutes that we've seen in the past. So just kind of ways to dig in a little bit deeper. Points per game usage obviously is huge in the minutes. Um, and then we start going over and we can look at like the volume. So we get a high high usage player. You know, three-pointers are worth a little bit more. We get those guys that maybe are attempting a lot of threes. Like you see Curry is attempting 11.7 threes so far, only making them at 25% um, efficiency. I'd have to go back and look, but I'm pretty sure his lead or his uh, career averages is a little bit higher than that. So you can kind of see that he's maybe running a little bit bad. Um, and those career numbers, that might be something I might run into the database so that we can kind of compare, kind of like with baseball, if you're familiar with DFS baseball, um, in looking at, uh, you know, a player's bad in average and his bad bip. Um, whip uh, for pitchers and stuff like that, kind of breaking down those stats to see if a player's kind of running hot, running cold, um, you know, right in one place. So that's something I'm looking at adding to the sheet. But for now, we can kind of check that out. Uh, effective field goal percentage is just giving you a little bit of a bonus saying that three pointers are worth a little bit more. So you get those high volume shooters, you get those numbers that are in the 50, 60% range. We're looking at, uh, you know, a pretty effective uh, efficiency type player. Then we got assists, steals, blocks, rebounds, um, and then we, oops. And then when we slide over to the right here, we've got the same as on the team matchups tab. We've got the team, that player's team efficiency on offense versus their opponent's defensive efficiency. Obviously, green is going to be good on both sides of that. And then pace, again, pace is something I really look at. Um, so, for instance, tonight, Washington and Chicago, uh, they're actually ranked number two and number three in pace in the league to start the season. That uh, that always does reflect in the Vegas totals um, as well. So you don't necessarily need to look at that, but it's just nice information to have there in front of you. As you can see, it's the highest total on the slate. Um, and they don't really play defense. So that's uh, that's great, too. So that's going to be one of the top matchups, obviously, when we start breaking it down um, from the team tab. Um, even on the individual player tabs, we start uh, noticing things like that um, over here on the team part, as well as the player stats and the individuals digging in. And then when the lineups start coming in, like I said, that, uh, you know, an hour leading up to the game, half an hour, a lot of teams, some you know, are, are five, ten minutes before, before they announce their starting lineup. And that is key information. So this is kind of one of the main tabs you're going to want to follow. I do try and screenshot uh, and place this place that screenshot into uh, slack as well sometimes uh, the sheets but this year i did organize the sheets a little bit better so that you can scroll down on your phone rather than having it uh, more of a wide version where you got to scroll sideways um, so i did make improvements for that so if you do have any suggestions or anything i know a lot of you use your phones um, for this stuff anyway i could make the sheet a little bit better for you definitely hit me up and chat and again if you're new 
Get over to rotopros.com, click that yellow sign up button, get your free trial, use promo code RP50 and get 50% off once that trial's out. And every single week we're running multiple free rolls. We have a members only free roll where we're giving out uh, a $5 credit and we have leaderboard points. So we give out points for th first, second, and third place finishers. At a certain amount of points, you're going to get uh, a $15 credit to your account and every 25 points, um, there's going to be more prizes coming down the line here as well. So get over to rollerpros.com, sign up today, join our winning team. Thanks for checking out the video, and again, if you've got any questions, hit me up in chat or on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs 9 or at Rotopros. Cheers, everyone.